Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 83 of Daryl20's Let's Play series, uh, where today I'm getting a bunch of netherite blocks. Whoa. Actually, I don't know if that's going to be enough or not. Didn't I have like a whole dimension of netherite blocks? I feel like I did. I feel like I did. Where's my dimension builders? Let me make another one of those. Um... So, I went through the list of Extreme Reactors moderators. It's a little hard to really understand, so I'm not 100% sure. Uh, there's actually a bunch of stats, and I don't know what most of them mean. But I picked out and noticed that Netherite blocks have some pretty good stats overall. Um, just kind of looking through the list, it seems to be one of the better ones. And I said to myself, you know what? I have a bunch of Netherite blocks, don't I? I do. I do indeed have a bunch of netherite blocks. Uh, so I said to myself, self, why don't we use them? And self agreed. And and thus and thus making my netherite blocks my 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 moderators is, is what we're gonna do. That's what I came up with. Um, you know, I, I there's there's a bunch of things you can use. I would say if you want to experiment and figure out like what the best one is, go for it. Uh, so which one was uh netherite OMG? That was definitely the one I wanted. Alright, let's dial that up. You're good? Okay. So what's uh, the dealio here? Look at this, just the ridiculousness of this. Can we just can we just say how ridiculous it is? Um, am I not getting straight up the blocks for this? Oh my goodness, that's hilarious. Um, or had I already converted them? Maybe I converted them into ingots. All right, cool. So I'm just going to mine these up a little bit. I don't know exactly how many I'll need. Now, in fairness, you may not have a dimension full of netherite when you're playing. So that's fine. It's not a big deal. It's all right. You're forgiven. Uh, there's there's a bunch of other resources you can go with. Um, and I don't know how much of a difference it would make. You know, maybe we could play with it a little bit to see what the differences look like. Maybe I'll throw like, I don't know. You know, copper doesn't look too bad either looking at the numbers. Netherite seems a little bit better though. Yeah. Netherite definitely seems to be good. Why don't I throw... I'm going to throw copper in there, because that's like a low tier block. And then we'll throw netherite in there, and we'll see what the difference is. Does that sound like a good plan? I feel like that would be cool. Okay. Now, like I said, I don't know how many blocks we're going to need here, but I figure it's going to be a decent amount-ish, right? Because I know we need seven per column. And let's see, it's a seven by seven internal... So that's 49, but only half of them need it. So let's say like 25-ish times 7. So roughly speaking, we would need a little less than 200, like 175-ish. Is that a fair assessment of, of a guess, of a total random guess? I guess that could be said. Man, Netherite just has a lot of durability for breaking, doesn't it? All right, so we should probably be close at this point, though, would be my guess. Yeah, uh, let's see. Close. I'll finish up these stacks, and then we'll be good. Close enough. Okay, let's pop home and see if that's cool. So like I said, we'll get some copper blocks, because I assume copper's, you know, probably okay. And then we'll go from there, all right? So just as a re reminder, right, we are... Playing with our big reactor, extreme reactor. Um, we've got it built. We didn't put any moderators in it. So as we know, we're not going to have a great time with the whole case heat and power gen thing, right? We're capping out our heat here around 2400. And I'm going to actually take notes on this so we can do a little bit of science. We're going to science it up. I am opening up a notepad to take notes. So like we're capping out here... Right around 2400, 2463, let's say, is what it's bouncing around at the core heat. Okay. Uh, the casing is around 1829, and RF per tick is around 24.18. So let's power this guy off. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is go with either copper or netherite. And we're going to start with copper right so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do this and then put this guy back in right and 
this is basically how you fill in your moderators. So that looks like a thing you guys don't need to see me do 25 times. So I'll be right back. Oh, by the way, recommendation would be go surface mode because then you can look at um, the columns and it won't um, go up. How cool is that? Eh? Now this is probably gonna be a little annoying for me to clear out and redo. Oh my goodness, that's cool. It actually does like multiples, awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be super annoying for me to remove all these, but eh, that's all right. I do it for the YouTubes. Do it for you all, so that you can learn. Learn with me. All right, let's cover this up. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be, so. And because I found a slightly smarter way to do it on camera, I did it. So, now with you guys all filled in, boom. Let's see what numbers we get with copper. Now, I probably needed you to be bigger than a range of seven for what I just did. So I'm gonna fix this off camera, we'll be right back. All right, so let's try it with all copper. Ready, go. And remember, you wanna give it a few seconds to stabilize because it's gonna take a few bits of time. So if we look at the settings now, and I'm just taking my notes. Uh, so you notice the core heat is definitely a little bit lower, 2340-ish, so just a smidge lower. The good news is the casing heat is a smidge higher, actually, almost 400 points higher, so that's close to 20% higher, which means that we're producing a lot more RF. See, 30,000-ish RF, 1,000, yeah, 30K-ish. Okay, so now let's do netherite. And I might, if I'm lucky, be able to undo most of these. Nice. All right, cool. So netherite's next. Good to go. So now just fill the glass back in, which I might be able to do cleverly with you too. Ha! Ah! How cool is that? All right, and we're good? We're good. So let's kick it on and let's see what we get. Uh, so with netherite now, and again, you don't have to go crazy with the netherite, but you know, look, netherite's barely an improvement over copper realistically. So, you know, if it were me and I didn't have a dimension of netherite, I would say just use copper. Um, and there's probably some other minor differences in between there. I do kind of want to just see what liquid ethylene does, because I heard that one can be good too. Uh, but I'm hesitant to go that crazy. And I, I, seeing netherite not being that much better just makes me like, eh, do I really want to go too crazy? Oh, we'll see. Let's see. Yeah, let me just double check a couple numbers here and see if there's anything else that looks drastically better. So that wasn't quite as much power as I was hoping for, though we might want to look into the turbine mechanic that this thing can do because we can totally do turbines with him too and i think that might give us a bunch more power uh hey what's going on with you buddy how come you ain't spinning are we uh out of fuel again okay cool how's this thing doing uh he's full of antimatter as a matter of fact did we get uh no gas stored well that's good at least we didn't back stuff over here uh but we are probably gonna have a little bit of a problem sooner than later uh, but we should handle, oh, look at us, we're getting into the yellow, or orange, I guess, is probably a more accurate color descriptor, but yeah, way down in terms of radiation exposure. Radiation's almost done, which is nice to see. Hey, let's get this uh, antimatter out of here. So antimatter, uh, switching back to the SPS, uh, can be used to make some stuff, but the main thing you're probably going to want to make with it, like... For two millibuckets of antimatter, you can generate quartz, basically. Uh, and for five millibuckets, you can generate weather skeleton skulls. So as you can see, you can get some cool stuff here. Um, you can get hearts of the sea. You can turn, make redstone. So there's a bunch of conversions you can do with antimatter, all for what I would call relatively cheap, right? Like, definitely relatively cheap. For a little bit of antimatter, you can get diamonds, right? Um, just a whole bunch of cool stuff. Oh, you can generate enchanted golden apples. That's not bad. That, I never noticed that one before. Anything else in here particularly cool looking? Oh, you can make crossbows. That's cool. Tridents. Phantom membranes. Dragon eggs. Okay. Ender chests. Neato. 
Uh, but the main thing that I want to get is antimatter pellets, because these can be really useful um, for making all kinds of cool stuff from the end game of mechanism. And I'd like to check some of that out today. Uh, but we need a thousand millibuckets of antimatter and we need a chemical crystallizer. So let's start the process of cooking up one of these right now. And I guess I can figure out um, why, you know, yeah, we, we know right now why we're not producing more uh, stuff, right? Because we have no more flour, right? So what I can do is I can add you to the exporter here. But we should probably get some more fluorite, flowerite. Now, did I make it so that my respawn anchor is a thing? I did, right? Yeah. So we really technically don't need to chunk load this guy no more. I should make a fluorite dimension. That would be cool. Right? Wouldn't that be cool? And I'm going to, I'm going to claim the chunk that this is in because if I don't, then I will forget, I will forget where I placed this thing. Okay, I absolutely will, um, if I don't. So yeah, let's, let's make sure that this stuff's all good to go here, and then we can start getting more fluorite. Lots of resources to collect there, that's cool. But we should definitely look into like a fluorite dimension or something like that. How hard would that be, now that that thing's cooking? We'll get some more fluorite coming in. Um, speaking of, yay, chemical crystallizer. Huzzah. See, plenty of fluorite. I mean, plenty being a relative term. Uh, yeah, you. Fluorite? Flowerite? Liquid? Hy uh, how about we do the Fluorite or from mechanism? Mm. Okay. All right. So let's do this. What I'm going to do is something like this. And hopefully we'll get um, fluorite ore built up in here like this. Um, and I wanted a block absorber, but I need to figure out how to get a sponge somehow. Um, that might be trickier than you would think. Is fishing like the only way to get a sponge? Isn't there an automatic fishing doohickey from Marine Fisher, huh? That might be a thing. That might be a thing. Let's try this out real quick. All right, so I better get my uh, antimatter stuff cooking better. So let's get this going. So I made my chemical crystallizer, gave it some power. I'm just gonna boop, boop, and boop. Is that is that automatically spitting out new? So let's get you ready to go. Make sure we're in some kind of config mode. Boom. Hello. There we go. Now we're cooking. Nice. And then the antimatter, which we have a thousand millibuckets of, uh, will convert into our very first piece of antimatter pellets. Nice. Uh, let's get a nice good old ender chest here, ready to roll. Plop you there. Items output on the right. Auto eject on, boom. And then antimatter's there and means antimatter is in here. Nice, our first antimatter pellet. The good news is that we will now start processing all this polonium that we've been getting, uh, which is good because, uh, you know, obvious reasons, we were starting to back stuff on polonium. And without having that processed, we would probably have another nuclear incident. I'm just saying, right? Uh, so now we currently have a net gain on polonium as we clear out the backlog of this nuclear waste because it was nighttime and this thing wasn't processing until night happened, right? But now uh, we should be net loss on this guy, right? Yeah. So see how nuclear waste is going down? Uh, over the course of the day, we'll burn through all the polonium that we've been backstuffing the last few days as a result of antimatter being backstuffed in here. And now all antimatter will be dumped into our chemical crystallizer. So as you can see, antimatter very slow. We need a much larger nuclear reactor if we want to start accumulating a lot more uh, antimatter, which maybe we'll get it. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to go with this. Um, I want to play with some of the antimatter stuff. That's for sure. Um, and having more power would be nice. It just means making bigger turbines and reactor glass. Or, or we could go with like the sodium-cooled reactors. That's also always an option, too. 
So we'll have to consider that. I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to go with some of this stuff. I'm really just not. But what I did want to check out was this marine fisher. Um, so let's go get this thing hooked up. As you can see, I set up this guy. All right, so you're going to just fish for me? Is that how this works? Get me some juice. Well, that was easy. Uh, let's talk about add-ons. One, two, three. Now, are you going to get, like, I don't know, stuff? Okay, what direction is this? Uh, east. Output east push. No, there's no push. Ah, right is west, left is east. Do what now? That was left east. I guess it's pushing now, though, isn't it? Yes, it is. There goes all the fish. All right, well, that works. Um, so maybe we will get a sponge from this? I don't know, actually. I have no idea. Uh, is there any indication as to, like, what the marine fisher gets me? Not really. I guess we just uh, chill for a bit and see if sponges show up. That works for me. When in doubt, tick accelerate, right? How much RF a tick is that using? Oh my goodness, 20,000? Okay, let's max it out. Seems to be pretty good. I guess we'll find out, right? If, if we're going to get a sponge, this is going to tell us whether or not sponges happen. So it's not looking good. I'll put it that way. Not looking good, for sure. Uh, we're going to have to see if there's another way to get sponges. All right, so failing this, if we found a underwater temple thingy, what are they called? Where the guardians hang out? Guardians drop sponges, don't they? Maybe we should go find that. I'm going to go, I'm looking at my map, and I see, like, there's there's some water in this general area, but this might also, I know this is a lukewarm ocean, so maybe this is, like, an ocean eventually. So I'm going to just head due east and see what I can find, and then we'll come back if we find anything. Cool. I think I see something up here. That might be something. Can you shoot dudes underwater? I don't even know. Apparently, yes. Oh, we're out of magic. Okay. I was going to say, like, why isn't my stuff's working? Oh, right. Now, in fairness, I don't think I ever enchanted this armor set that I have on. I win. Oh man, there's two of these named dudes. I should probably escape a little bit. A little bit! Man, he hurts. Again, no enchanted armor, so... Got him. All right, uh, boy, do I have a lot of junk on me. Any, uh, anything I actually want, though? That's a question. Mm, we got a Riptide. That's cool. Helmet, helmet, leather, junk. Another Riptide. Another Riptide. Turtle shell. 
Mending fishing rod. Don't think I need pressure tubes on me anymore, right? I haven't been doing that stuff for a while. All right, so this isn't exactly what I was looking for. Like, this is some kind of underwater structure, but I don't think there's sponges here. We're looking for something a little bit better. Let's, uh... Let's sleep through this here night. Be right back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, one of these dudes. Okay, that makes sense. Cool. I'm just kind of keeping out an eye while I'm uh, flying around out here for what might look like one of those underwater structure dudes. Oh, there's another another named guy. Sergeant the Soaked. Oh boy, whatever that was hurt. Wrecked. Another Riptide and a buried treasure map. All right, cool. I think I've cracked the code on getting Riptide uh, stuffs. But still no such luck. What is this neat place? No such luck on a sponge, though. Anything fancy here? No. Nothing good. Didn't want to have to break this log underwater. Hey, there we go. Another buried treasure map. Okay, cool. Uh, back to hunting for stuff. Hold on to your horses. I think I just found one. Elder Guardian. Booyah. Let's do it, shall we? Seems like you're approaching an ocean monument. Until you defeat all the other guardians, or unless you flee, you'll not be able to break blocks. Okay, good to know. Holy cow, look at that. Are there enough guardians here or what? Holy guacamole. Elder Minion is targeting you? Oh my goodness, what is this? I'm not sure I feel particularly safe at the moment. Do I have on my night vision? Can we enable that real quick? Thank you. Does that help? Is that better, YouTube? Elder Minions attacking? Oh boy. I'm a little bit nervous here. I'm glad that I have, that I have breathing, though. Like, that's pretty awesome, right? I'm not loving this. Ah. Well, that hurt. Suddenly, lots of pain. All right, I guess we'll be back. So here's a funny thing. Uh, yeah. You can't break blocks inside a monument until you kill the guardians. That includes your grave. So I had to go into creative mode to get my stuff back. Yeah, that's super... Not cool. I'm pretty sure that was an unintended side effect of whatever mod decided you can't break blocks until you kill all the Elder Guardians. But we might need to enchant some armor at some point. As I sit here waiting to enchant my very first piece of armor, and realizing just how negligent I've been about my Batania stuff, I feel like maybe I should get into Batania and Mythic Botany a little bit, so that we can get some, like, really coolish, nifty-ish, fun things going on. Hmm, yeah, I wouldn't mind one of these bad boys. Uh, yeah. Let's let's do a little bit of Batania. Um, that's what I'm thinking we should do. I would like to get my mana stuff better, get access to some better cool toys from Batania, also be able to enchant armor a little bit easier, because trying to enchant all this gear with just a handful of endoflames is just not going to be fun for me to do again. Uh, plus, I get to show you guys not only Batania a little bit, because we've only touched on it, but also we could look at Mythic Botany, which is like an expansion mod for Batania, and add some really cool and some powerful stuff. Does that sound like super nifty? I like the sound of that. There's like a whole dimension to go to and everything. Like, there's some cool stuff in Mythic Botany. I'm just saying. Some real, still, really cool stuff. 
All right, yeah, let's do that. Let's get into Batania a little bit more. Does that sound cool? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off on going back to that temple because, ouch, did that hurt. Uh, where was that bad boy? He was up here-ish. Yeah. Let's add a waypoint for Water Temple. Ouch. Um, and then what we could do is we could amp up some of this cool pneumaticraft gear. And or get into Quantum Armor anyway from Mechanism. And get some cool toys from Batania to maybe help us out. Um, because clearly the whole Endo Flame feet no, just way, I only, this is my first piece I'm trying to enchant, and yes, it hurts a lot. So let's look at that, shall we? What is this? Oh, Night Vision, right. Okay, cool. Um, where are we at? All right, so one of the things we're going to want to do first to get into, uh, Batania a little bit more is get more mana. <laughs> That's really the first thing we need to do. But what we want to make first is Terra Steel, and for that we're going to need a Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. Uh, did I do Terra Steel at all yet? I don't think I have. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I haven't, right? There's no... My goodness, look at the... What have the Endermen been up to in here? Holy cow. Just how much of a mess have the Endermen been doing? It's a simple question. All right, that's a little cleaner. So I'm thinking we could throw the terrestrial agglomeration plate maybe in this general area. Uh, so if we look at it in the book, we're not going to be able to make it just yet. But here seems like a pretty good place for it to live. Um, let me put it here just to be safer. Uh, the multi-block is a, a pattern, and we could visualize it if we want. But it's basically just uh, living rock and lapis, right? We could use more living rock. We should probably consider automating living rock, and that could be fun. That could be fun to automate, yeah? Maybe a little automation for living rock and living wood? What would be a good way for doing this? Drones? Drones could be fun. Drones could automate this. Would we want drones in here automating living rock and living stone? Because I bet I could. I bet I could. Should we use Pneumaticraft drones to automate living wood and living stuff? Like, that would be cool. I think that would be a fun way to do it. How do we feel about that, folks? Does that sound cool? So, like, step one, I'm just going to get some regular old stone here and place it because I need, I need to make this quickly. But, like, having drones do this would probably be fun. At least for me. And hopefully for you to see. Um, yeah, I like that idea. The more I think about it, the more it sounds cool to me. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, probably not in today's episode, obviously, because we're getting we're getting close-ish to the old wrapping up point. And I'm just debating if I would want the drone flying around inside this building or or not. But anyway, uh, what we want to have here is you go here, 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 and here is your multi-block. And then this guy, like so. And then the terrestrial agglomeration plate has to chill right here. Uh, and the terrestrial agglomeration plate requires one of each rune and a bunch of mana steel, which we can't get until we get more mana, uh, which we can't accumulate until we finish enchanting this one. He's so close. And I can't tick accelerate. That's the worst part. Basky defeats me. All right. Um, but that's the basics for that. What I could do, let me just wait, I guess, until we can accumulate some mana here. Because as soon as this is done enchanting, then we'll be in better place. All right, enchantment complete. Boom, boom, boom. And this thing should repair itself, right? Yeah. All right, cool. Radiation shielding upgrade. Was there a thing that I needed to make him repair himself? Where's that pneumatic book? Uh, pneumatic armor. Speed upgrade, armor upgrade, increases the protection and toughness of each armor piece with two upgrades install each piece as a good opposed to with a maximum four upgrades. Protection is... I should get armor upgrades on these guys, really. I should think about it at least, right? Um, slowly repair an armor piece that costs of air up to five upgrades installing each providing infinitely faster 
but less air efficient repair. Item life upgrade. Yeah, all right, so here's my thoughts, right? Number one, accumulate more mana. You guys just do that. Uh, number two, let's pop over to Midway and see what upgrades already exist in this armor. Did I do anything by way of item life or armor upgrades? I don't think I did. Yeah, I didn't, right? So what I would want to do is teach you how to make these guys. And you probably need to know how to make a clock as well, because I doubt you know how to make those. Correct. Uh, and then armor. Okay. Boom. 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 Now this book tells me that I can have up to five to speed up the repair, but it's less air efficient. But that, I don't know if I care about that. Uh, and then armor upgrades with a maximum of four upgrades, right? So I would want, for armor upgrades, we would want 16. And for life upgrades, we would want 20. Okay. Uh, so if I throw this dude in here and I did this, and then equipped him, he should be repairing himself now, right? Look, durability's going up. Look at it go. That's cool. Durability's not going up here, but it is here. So we want to do the same thing here. Here. And here. And now they should all be repairing themselves. Right? How cool is that? Dude, I love Pneumaticraft. It is so cool. Right? And then we'll get uh, some drones. So let's get ourselves a drone. Make all the crafting happen. Let's go check in on our mage tower. You guys are accumulating here. So how about we do this? Let's wrap up the episode here. Then I'm going to um, prepare between episodes uh, basically one of these again. Okay. Uh, so we're going to need an advanced one of these. Uh, I'm probably going to want to put away all these enchantment books for a minute because reasons. I need inventory space mostly. Uh, let's teach you how to make the advanced liquid guys. Um, and then you're also going to need to know how to make liquid compressors. And I'm assuming... You're also going to need to know how to make regular compressors now. So with those done, we should be able to make everything we need for that. We're also going to want... Basically, I want to be able to make this thing, right? So we want a pressure gauge tube module, but an advanced one. Heat sinks and a charging station with a dispenser upgrade. Right? Pressure tube gauge module. So I need you to know how to make this stuff. And heat sinks. Do you already know how to make heat sinks? You don't, but we have a lot. But I guess it can't hurt to teach you. Um, and then we're going to want a charging station. So that anytime we want to create a cool drone area, we totally can. And apparently you don't know how to make bricks. So it's about time you learned how to make bricks out of clay. Uh, and then a dispenser upgrade. And it's probably not a bad idea for you to learn how to make dispensers. Is that cool? How many times have I made those by hand? Okay. So let's wrap up the episode here. We'll come back next time. We'll set up drones and program them such that they can automatically make um, the things I want. Right. And then we will get into Batania, progress through the model a little bit, get
get the portal to Alpine, get Terra Steel going, get more mana generation, that kind of fun stuff. Then we can amp up our armor here. Then we should be really cool. Does that sound good? All right. Wrapping up point for the episode. Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll come back next time because we have a bunch of cool stuff to work on now. All right. Take it easy.